Today we're in Haverhill, Massachusetts, where we're at Royal Limousine, which manufactures and sells limousines. And with me right now is Steve Edelman. Talk a little bit about how this business came to be. And uh, of course, we're in Haverhill here, Haverhill, Massachusetts. And why did they pick this spot? Uh, the company uh, began in uh, Florida. Okay. Uh, and there's three partners involved. There's Cabot Smith, who's the president. There's Richard Porter, his vice president, and McGregor Smith, his other uh, vice president. And the three of them became involved back in, uh, well, they, the, the company started in 80, 1983 in Florida. Okay. And it was private labeling the vehicles at that time to a company in the Chicago area. And uh, then at that point, they decided to move the, the uh, company from Florida up to Haverhill, Mass, figuring that uh, Boston was one of the four top limousine uh, users at the time citywide. Um, and that obviously New, uh, New York was the number one uh, city that uh, ran limousines. So they felt that the Northeast was a perfect place to uh, bring the, the company to. So they moved it up here in 1986. Okay, Steve, where are we now and what are we doing here? Uh, we're in our facility. On the left, we have our metal fabrication shop where we'll build the parts before the vehicle even enters into the shop. So we'll have a heads up on what we'll know what we're building. They can start making the components. And then once we pull in the vehicle, they're ready for it. And we'll be going over to the right here on this uh, trolley style rack that we've set up. We cut through the roof rails and the frame rails. Uh, and then we've bent up the steel so it matches up with what the factory has. We'll use the same, state, same gauge steel as what the factory uses or heavier duty. And we'll, we'll corrugate the floorboards by hand to give them extra strength so that uh, you won't have a problem with any oil can effects. Um, we'll do the uh, roof rails the same thing. We'll, and then we'll use the sheet metal for the roof and we have a tunnel here for the drive shaft. We've inserted all kinds of uh, braces and uh, body mounts to, as well to help with the suspension and the vehicle itself. So this is typically on this rack for a day and then it'll go to have the side panels worked on at that point, which is about a day process as well. Quite a bit of what we do is bending up the uh, metal components here. You can see this is the floorboards for a 140 inch uh, vehicle. It's upside down. So what we've done, you know, so what you saw in the car, this is turned upside down. So they're welding the braces in place. And we'll use all DOT approved seatbelt mountings and body mounts and things like that. This is like be like the third phase. The first phase is take the interior out of the car, strip it out, set it aside. The second phase is cutting the car, putting the roof and floor in the car, putting the drive shaft back in and, the, and extending the exhaust pipes. Then at this point, we're over here where they'll be extending, uh, making the side panels on the vehicle. So what we've done here is we've added another pillar post for the rear doors. Yep. Because we've cut the car behind the driver's compartment. So this all stays the same. We've added another uh, pillar post there. And here we're making it the side panels. We'll stamp those out ahead of time and then we'll measure them to the vehicle so that they fit precisely and we have the proper door gaps and whatnot. This here is a crash rail, which would be a safety feature so that if there's a side impact, this is gonna protect you. Um, when we build the vehicle, we'll build it with, it'll uh, be bolted on so that if there's ever an impact where it's too severe, where it can't be fixed with body work, you can unbolt it, we can make a new one and bolt it on. So it gives a... How about bulletproof windows? <laughs> uh, we don't do that here, but we have had some done in the past. Oh, you have? In fact, uh, we've, uh, the bulk of it, has they've been sent to the Middle East, yeah, yeah. but we have had uh, a number that were armored and, and sent over to the Middle East. When you get those in, do you treat them differently? Or? Well, the, uh, the startling thing that a lot of people don't realize, well, we didn't even realize way back when, but what they want you to do in the armoring company is to build the limousine complete, then ship it to them, wow. and they'll take it apart, 
fit the windows or the Kevlar or the armor plating to the vehicle and then reassemble it, we would have thought that you would do it at this phase right, here where right, you're doing right. the metal work, but they want the vehicle to be complete first and then they'll fit their parts into that. They want to do their own thing so right. that they're right. for security reasons, I'm sure. So we have two lifts. Yep. We can do service work and on this particular case, what he's doing is he's changing the front springs uh, so that it's a heavier duty spring. In the rear, the springs are, it's an air shock system or air suspension system, so they'll adjust the load leveling to hold, to, to withstand the extra load that they'll have. But in the front springs, we'll change those, car, those coil springs to meet that same higher gross vehicle weight of the vehicle as well. We'll use two types of uh, undercoating. We'll use catalyzed primer, which is non-porous. It's an epoxy-based primer. So we'll use first a self-etching primer, which bites into the steel. Then we'll use a catalyzed primer, which coats it and protects it. And then we'll go over it with a rubberized undercoat. Uh, we have various paint booths set up throughout. So we had one in the beginning for the metal shop. So if any parts needed to be primed or prepped, it could be done at that area. Yep. In this area, we have our body and paint shop set up so that they can uh, put on the vinyl tops. We'll, uh, in that body area inside there, they'll uh, work the panels and paint, paint and prime those. Then they'll do the door jam area. And then in that far booth is where we'll do most of our painting uh, of the whole vehicle itself. And that is baking capabilities as well. So that technically we could uh, work on a, once a car's painted, we could work on it within an hour and a half or two hours after painted. But we usually wait till the next day. Do you have like testing areas and stuff like that? Yeah, throughout each department has a checkoff sheet and testing area to make sure that before it goes to the next step that things have been inspected. And then, uh, in fact, we're gonna be going around the corner here and once it's painted, once the side panels are back on the vehicle, the vinyl tops on the vehicle, the windows and moldings have been put in it, at that point, before it goes any further, we'll run it through our car wash with someone inside it and someone outside it so that they can make sure there's no leaks before it goes any further. So they're working on the panels. Yep. Um, they'll put them on these saw horses so they can do a much better job. Okay. If, if they were already welded onto the, the vehicle itself, like some manufacturers do, then the body guy has to get down on hands and knees and bending right. over and you can't do as good a job as far as just what they're doing mainly is just filing out the highs and lows to make sure the panels are straight as possible. Right. Um, and then it'll get uh, that, what you see there, that green primer is a catalyzed primer, so it's a good protective coating on the vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. Then once that's done, they'll paint the sides and the back part, put it on the vehicle, and then they'll uh, paint the whole cart in the paint shop there. Over here on the left here is a, uh, a fusion that we built. It's a hybrid sedan. The hybrids were built mainly to be a smaller vehicle and better on fuel economy. But about two or three years ago, we started building these where for the livery industry. So what we did was we cut the car, extended it six inches, and we're making it into a livery vehicle where the rear door is extended six inches. So it makes it so that you have a lot more leg room in the rear right. and it's easier to get in and out of the vehicle so that if two people want to ride in that, you're going to get fuel economy of 41 miles per gallon city and 36 highway as opposed to 14 and 20. So it'll alternate back and forth. It's got a regenerative braking system, which also charges, it uses the engine to help charge the battery up when you're uh, going at the lower speeds up to 45 or 47 miles per hour. Also prolongs the brake life of the vehicle. It's a fantastic vehicle. And then they started with, that was the first vehicle that Ford had that we could use. And then last year they came out with the MKZ, which is the Lincoln version of that same vehicle.